Here's a $5 circuit tester. No buttons, no switches, just four neon bulbs and a whole lot of claims in the back of the box. Let's see how this thing works. Let's see what we got in here. Got the unit. Are there instructions? No instructions. This is all the info we got. Four-way tester, AC and DC, four voltage ranges, color-coded leads, checks current, polarity and line frequency. I'm guessing they mean voltage. This is not a current measurement device and can be used to test a variety of equipment. Starting out with the 110 volt light. That's working. Very dim. But that lights. None of the others do. The 220 volt indicator can be tested with the 240 volt circuit of the dryer outlet. The 110 and the 220 lights both illuminate. That works. Yes, I taped it to the wall so I could do this more easily. If I want to test the 277 or 460, I gotta get creative. This is a 24 volt control transformer for air conditioning or industrial equipment. But looking at the layout of the primary winding, I can do something clever here. The secondary won't be used today. I'm going to cap them off so they don't get in trouble. I'm more interested in the primary winding. White is common, in this case, neutral. And then we have four other taps for the various input voltages. I'm going to wire up the power cord with a few extra bits. This white wire will be a tap to access the common or neutral terminal going into the transformer. Black wire here is the 120 volt line input. The configuration of the primary allows it to work like an auto transformer. I got neutral, 208, 240, and 460 taps from a 120 input. If I start my variac here, set the line for about 120. A little bit high, but there's a 208, and 240. And a 460, actually quite high, 494. I will need to adjust these a bit. I'm gonna back this down until it sits right about at 208. Test the other ones, 240. And the 460 is gonna run a little bit hot at 483, still within range. Now let's see what this thing does. Obligatory, do not try this yourself, please. Power's on. Let's see, what does it detect on a 208? Faint 220, so it will suggest that there's higher voltage than 110 with a 208 line. The 240 line also is detected a little bit stronger. The 460 picks that up for sure. Now let's see how sensitive this thing is. I have the meter and this voltage tester hooked up in parallel to the 460 volt output. Very exit zero. Power's on. This will read the voltage delivered to the tester. We'll slowly increase it. All right, right here. It's quite faint, but just around 84, 85 volts, the 110 volt light begins to illuminate. As I increase it further, I start to see a little bit of light from the 220 volt indicator, and that appears to strike around 185, so that would detect a low 208 circuit quite faintly. Bring this up, 240. The 277 light's a little bit sensitive, so a hot, higher voltage than normal 240 circuit would trigger the 277 light. 245, 246, 247, somewhere in there. Comes into its own there, not bad. Right there, the 460 light, that starts around 380, so that'll start plenty early certainly will light up strongly by the time the nominal voltage is reached. And apparently it can withstand an overload up to over 500 volts in case the 460 line is really running hot. Pretty cool. Much better than expected. How about its ability to detect direct current polarity? Got a diode here off the 208 line. Got about 70 volts AC coming in from the Variac. 
If I put red to positive on the diode, get a faint light. If I switch these around, also got a light, but on the other electrode. The operator will have to look closely. If both electrodes in the neon bulb light up, it's AC. If only one lights up, it's DC. So that's what it does. Let's see how it does it. I'm not overly attached to this thing, and I already have some ideas on how I can use the internal components, even if the housing does not survive this process. Gonna give him credit for a lightweight housing that is very firmly secured together. If you're enjoying my antics, drop a like to help more people find this video, and consider subscribing if you haven't yet. More info, links to my socials, and ways to support the channel can be found in the description below. Well, there's really not a lot happening in here. Four neon bulbs and five resistors. R1 serves as current limiter for the whole device. R2 through R5 form a voltage divider with multiple taps. Each of these resistors will have one of the neons in parallel. Here, 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 and here. When voltage is first applied, 1 megohm R5 will take the largest share of the voltage drop, causing the first neon, the 110 volt indicator, to illuminate first. Once lit, the neon has a fairly low voltage drop, maybe 50 volts or so, which will effectively bypass the resistor and apply more voltage to the devices further up the chain. As the voltage continues to rise, R4, the 220K resistor, will cause the 220 volt neon to illuminate, causing more voltage drop across R3 and R2. 120K R3 will allow the 277 volt indicator to light, and finally drop across the 56K R2 will let the 460 volt indicator light. R1 limits current to the whole device, Neons without a ballast will go into runaway. It's a clever circuit and it works well, but I have my concerns. A closer look at the input terminal shows there's not much spacing. Recommended spacing 301 to 500 volts AC or DC is two and a half millimeters. Especially with the black wire displaced when it was soldered, we definitely don't have that. We got 1.78. In fact, the more I look, the worse it gets. Notice there's no sign of any sort of safety testing on the unit or its packaging. Should be a Cat 3 600 volt for this application. This thing wouldn't even make the scale. As tough as this housing was to pry apart with a screwdriver, there's no way it would contain an arc flash. I trust the similarly priced Harbor Freight multimeter more. At least the housing here doesn't have open view ports that would direct a plasma fireball at the user's face. Not to mention, these teeny tiny leads just might be the initiator of the arc flash anyways, right in the user's hand. No worries, they do remind you to wear your safety goggles. Well, that was a fun mini teardown. Am I going to use parts from this thing in a future project? Yeah, sure, why not? Do I recommend you buy or use one yourself? Ah! No, it's probably going to go boom. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you next time.